The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalo Valyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. I am Gembo Pamela Chiu, your citizenship education in the class of Form 5. We separated last class with an assignment and today we shall start by looking at the correction of the assignment. The question was, read on the consequences of international conflicts and cite two examples of international conflicts. I take the question all over. Read on the consequences of international conflicts and cite two examples of international conflicts. This is the answer, the First World War and the Second World War. These are examples of international conflicts because they were wars or conflicts that involved sovereign states of different, different sovereign states or different countries. That is why we call it international conflicts. So today we shall move on to lesson 11. The title of our lesson is Consequences of International Conflicts. So you write down the lesson number and the title. The lesson number is lesson 11 and the title of the lesson is Consequences of International Conflicts. This is the plan of our lesson. We shall begin by looking at the learning objectives, we we'll proceed to previous knowledge, we we'll consider the situation problem, we we'll carry out learning activity and application exercises. Then we shall separate with an assignment. With that said, let's look at the learning objectives. The learning objective states that you will explain the political, economic, and social consequences of international conflicts. So as the lesson unfolds, you should be able to explain the political, economic, and social consequences of international conflicts. Learners, you've, you've, you have knowledge on the types and causes of conflicts. In our last lesson, we were looking at interpersonal conflicts. So you have knowledge on the types and the causes of conflicts. Let us now consider this situation in real life. Your village of some, your village of some 600 inhabitants has suddenly witnessed the influx and settlement of some 250 Southern Sudanese refugees. Listen keenly, your village of some 600 inhabitants has suddenly witnessed the influx and settlement of some 250 Southern Sudanese refugees. What two social challenges will likely be faced by these settlers? What two social challenges will likely 
be faced by these settlers. So this is a situation problem. Now let's consider this document. It's document, titled document one. And on the document, we see, we see a child dressed in military uniform and holding a gun. And we can find some adults accompanying him from the, from the background. And we see another child. So we find children who are actually at the forefront holding guns and adults following them. As you reflect over the document, let's look at this question. What political effects of conflict is projected on the document? What political effect of conflict is projected on the document? Cite other political consequences of international conflicts. Let's take the questions all over before we go back to our document. What political effect of conflict is projected on the document? Cite other political consequences of international conflicts. Just look at the document. Political effects of conflicts. Political effects of conflicts. From this document, just begin to reflect on the political effects of conflict. So let's look at the answer. Conscription of children as soldiers. Conscription of children as soldiers. If we look on this document, you see a, a, a child with a military uniform and holding a gun. And we find other people, this is another child, in military uniform and in the background we find adults in military uniform all holding guns so this document is projecting the conscription of children in the military so it is the political effect of this conflict this conflict is so this conflict is so severe that children are conscripted to fight in the battlefield. Let's look at the other political consequences of international conflicts. We have the first, cross-border security. Cross-border security. Cross-border insecurity. Because of conflicts between two countries, we find that their borders are always, they remain insecure because militias keep attacking from one country to another. So there is cross-border insecurity that generates as a result of international conflicts. We equally have the disappearance of sovereign states. If we take the case of Poland, Poland disappeared from the world map after the partition of Poland by Austria, Russia, and Prussia, and only reappeared again on the world map during the Paris Peace Conference. So international conflicts can lead to the disappearance of sovereign states. We equally have unhealthy political rivalries that spark as a result of international conflicts. We equally can see international terrorism. International terrorism, terrorism across borders, like we have Boko Haram, Boko Haram operating in sub-Saharan Africa in Chad, in Cameroon, in, in Niger, in northern Nigeria, and even in Mali. This is international terrorism. We have strained diplomatic relations. When two countries 
get into dispute, their relations are strained. There is often the withdrawal of ambassadors because as a result of conflict and this strained diplomatic relations. Another political consequence is that it leads to the development of extremist groups, like we have the Hezbollah operating in the Middle East as a result of the Palestinian-Israeli crisis. Another political conflict, uh, uh, consequence of international conflict is the proliferation of military equipment. Companies that produce arms sell arms to individuals or to groups and these arms are transferred illegally to the different camps. We equally have the proliferation of military technology. We hear of military of uh, the explosion of bombs but we know that those exploding the bombs cannot actually produce bombs so it is military technology that has been transferred from outside or as a result of conflicts they come in touch with those tech with the technology they were they had not been used to so there is this transfer of military technology during international conflicts and we equally have the loss of lives. And generally in Africa, international conflicts often lead to military takeover, especially when a state is defeated or humiliated. The military always take over in order to, to restore order and to revenge the defeat. And we equally have the loss of international prestige. We, we remember when France was defeated in Indochina, it became a humiliation to France to the point that France was, was open to negotiate for the decolonization of her African territories because of this international conflict that she did not succeed to win in Indochina. Let's now look at the economic consequences of international conflicts. Economic consequences. We have moved from political consequences to economic consequences. We have breakdown of the economy. When we talk of the breakdown of the economy, what are we referring to? We are looking at the destruction of road infrastructures through bombardment, the destruction of bridges, and even road, other road infrastructures, tab roads are exploded using bombs. The destruction of communication system. This is another consequence of international conflicts. Telephone lines are destroyed. We equally have the destruction of farms indiscriminate destruction and uh, bombardment uh, affects farms. Farms are destroyed. Industries are destroyed. After the second, after the first world war, the Europe had to go into economic recession or the Great Depression because of the much destruction that took place during that war. Industries were destroyed. The farms were destroyed. Communication lines, road infrastructures, and even the banking system collapsed. So these are a, a sign that the economy of the world got broken down after the first world war. So when they talk of the breakdown of the economy, you should think of the destruction of road infrastructure, destruction of communication system, farms, industries, and the banking system. Another aspect of the economic consequences is at looking at the reconstruction efforts that have to take place after international conflicts. We have economic development. Many countries after international conflicts have to embark on economic development. International organizations have to give out loans for economic development, for social reconstruction. That is the reconstruction of 
of homes, the reconstruction of houses for people to live, and the provision of social amenities. We equally have justice rehabilitation. During international conflicts, there is a lot of mob justice that is practiced. So after international conflict, there is the rehabilitation of justice. That's the return to, to the rule of the law. We equally have preventive diplomacy. Peacekeeping efforts are deployed and there is peace building after the after international conflicts. All this is to ensure that there is peaceful reconstruction because reconstruction cannot take place in disorder. War, the conflicts must come to, the conflict must come to an end for reconstruction to take place. Now let's again observe another document. This is its titled document two, that is social consequences. Document two, we find a man with a folded mattress. We find another man with another folded mattress. We find the background seem resemble that of people who are escaping because we see it's as if there are people who left unprepared. So observe the images on this document and let us look at the questions. Describe the scene on the document. Describe the scene on the document. Document two, describe the scene. The answer is, these are people displaced by conflict. These are people displaced by conflict. It is a photograph of refugees escaping from a conflict zone. So when we consider the document, we could see that there were people who were displaced by conflict and the, those escaping were refugees. People who escape as a result of conflict are referred to as refugees. So these people have been displaced by conflict and they have become refugees. So they are looking for a safe place to live in. So identify some problems the people on the document may likely encounter ahead of them. Identify some problems the people on the document may likely encounter ahead of them. So let's go back to this document. What are some of the problems these people may likely encounter ahead of them? Observe the document well. And let's get back to identify some problems the people on the document may likely encounter ahead of them. They may encounter diseases because they may, they may be attacked. They are moving into unhygienic homes. Some of them will be exposed to drink dirty water eat food that is not clean and so they are exposed to diseases. They, they are running away. We saw them carrying just mattresses, no food. So another problem they may face is starvation, lack of shelter. They are going, we didn't find any building or construction material. So it's difficult for somebody to transport all the building material at the same time. So lack of shelter and lack of portable water. They don't even know whether the, their destination will have water. Will the water be good for drinking? They will not have educational fa facilities where they are going to. They, will, they may not have schools. So there will be no educational infrastructure and many other uh, con social consequences. Another social consequence, we shall now be looking at the collapse of support systems. 
as collapse of support systems. This is another social consequence of international conflicts. The collapse of support systems. When we talk of the collapse of support system, we are talking about the destruction of food supply, the destruction of the health system, that is destruction of hospitals, the lack of medication, the collapse of preventive health system, the collapse of the social security. When we talk of social security, we are talking about retirement benefits, family allowance, the collapse of the state itself. This is another document and it's titled Document 3, International Conflict, War, 2001 to 2013. The title International Conflict, War, 2001 to 2013. And we find, we find planes. And you can see that some of these planes, they are war planes with missiles. If we look, you see this plane is carrying a missile for bombardment. Now let's look at the question. Describe the scene on the document and cite the possible consequences of the action. Describe the scene on the document and on the document and cite the possible consequences of the action. Let's get back to our document. International conflict war 2001-2013. And we find the war planes. They say you should describe the scene on the document and cite the possible consequences of the action. The scene, it is an air bombardment during a conflict. It is an air bombardment during a conflict. The title of that document was International Conflict. So it is an air bombardment during conflict. The possible consequences will include the loss of lives, the destruction of property, the destruction of nature, the displacement of the population. So these are the possible consequences. Now, another aspect of social consequences of international conflict will focus on the victims of the conflict, who are those who are affected by the international conflict. We have wounded persons, we have detainees, we have prisoners of war, we have civilian population. These are victims of international conflicts. Another social con uh, consequence is related to war crimes, crimes that are committed during international conflicts. We call them crimes because they are things that are forbidden by human rights. Torture is a crime even during conflict. Harassment is a crime, whether it is sexually, it is a crime during conflict. Disappearances, you hear of kidnappings, it is a crime even during conflict that is punishable by the international law. Refugee, refugees problems. We have sexual violence, murder. These are crimes that are committed. Most often, even in the refugee camps, you hear that people were attacked. An attack on refugee camp is a war crime because the refugees are protected during the conflict. Now, let us look at these application exercises. Consequences of, con of the conflict, economic, social, and environmental. That is the title of this document. Consequences of the conflict, economic, social, and environmental. This is the title of the document. 
and we find village buildings and we you can see people struggling to excavate it's as if they bombarded a building with people inside and they are struggling to 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 dig in order to recover the the, the people involved buried by this building alive or dead so there is a search for dis disappeared people people that have disappeared and the title of the document states that it is the there are consequences of the conflict so it means it is a conflict that led to the destruction of this building with people inside now what is the nature of this document? That's the first question. Classify the consequences of this action under economic, social, and environmental. Let's get back to our document. Consequences of the conflict, economic, social, and environmental. So when you look at this document, you should classify the consequences of this, docu of this conflict under economic, social and environmental but let's start by describing the scene on the document say so what is the nature of this document if we it is a settlement that has been hit by air bombardment if we get back to the document it is a settlement that has been hit by air bombardment Classify the consequences of this action under economic, social, and environmental. Economic consequences, the destruction of property. The house is property. It has been destroyed. Economic resentment. Social consequences, loss of lives. Certainly, people where a people died as a result of that the bombardment of that building destruction of homes psychological torture even if some are, some of the victims are recovered alive they will be psychologically tortured because of what they suffered disappearances we saw the people struggling to search it means some people disappeared when they incident occurred. Environmental consequences of the document. We have destruction of the landscape, destruction of the vegetation, air pollution, and even water pollution. These are some of the environmental consequences of the action that we saw on the document. Side three positive and three negative consequences of international conflicts. So far, we've seen a host of negative consequences. Now, three positive and three negative consequences of international conflicts. Positive consequences include the overthrow of dictators, dictatorship regimes. It stimulates research and scientific inventions. We know that the radar was, this, it was invented during the Second World War, so it was a scientific invention. Reconstruction leads to the replacement of obsolete infrastructures with modern ones. Negative consequences will include loss of lives, political instability, and unemployment because of the destruction of industries and the breakdown of the state. Now, this is your assignment in preparation for next class. Read on the international humanitarian law and identify the importance of it. You read on the international humanitarian law and identify the importance of it. These are references to help you in, in the assignment. So you, you can consult these documents to help you do the assignment in preparation for next class. 
and also to enrich your knowledge on the lesson. Our next lesson will be on the international humanitarian law. So we will write down the title of our next lesson, the international humanitarian law. Manetambia ninja ne injo bia yen.